Starlink Report. This is the Starlink Report. For September 13th, 2021, I'm Huey Popla. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and of course, ask for notifications. Many communities across the country and the world still lack access to broadband connectivity. The goal with Starlink is to close that digital divide and provide access to this innovative, cost-effective, and spectrum-efficient technology of Starlink. To date, SpaceX has deployed 1,740 satellites in low Earth orbit, but the goal is to get all the way up to 12,000 for their constellation. All this since May 2019, when SpaceX launched its first batch of operational Starlink satellites. Back on January 24th, SpaceX launched 10 satellites into polar orbit and another three Starlink payloads launched in a similar orbit in June. These satellites are in polar orbit and feature the laser links. This upgrade allows SpaceX to provide internet connectivity near the poles and in other regions without ground stations. Ground stations take a long time to communicate with satellites, which affects data transfers. Musk claims that with laser satellites, the speed will be 40% faster than what optical fibers offer right now. All this without any equipment on the ground. During the 36th Annual Space Symposium in August, we learned from SpaceX's President Gwen Shotwell that they've been busy rushing to complete manufacturing the first batches of their next-generation satellites, and those next-gen satellites are equipped with laser communication links. The next launch will be from Vandenberg Space Force Base. This will be the first Starlink mission launched from California. The mission is assigned the name Starlink 2-1. It will be deployed into different orbital parameters. This is the first of the next generation Starlink Gen 2 system satellites. The next launch will be 51 Starlink satellites atop the Falcon 9 rocket. It will be the 29th operational Starlink mission boosting the total number of Starlink satellites to 1791. This next launch is scheduled for Monday, September 13th. Hey, that's today! Scheduled liftoff is 8.55 p.m. Pacific Time and 11.55 Eastern Time. The surge of COVID-19 has been impacting rocket launches due to a shortage of liquid oxygen. In fact, this is something that Shotwell confirmed. She even said if anyone has any spare liquid oxygen to send her an email. Elon Musk said via Twitter, data packets do not need to touch. Regular internet data can flow from user terminal to satellites to user terminal. The aviation and maritime sectors, both military and commercial, offer huge potential markets for Starlink that can only be tapped with laser linking. The crosslinks are the key to truly getting lower latency than fiber optic cable, especially over long distances. Ground stations will still be relevant, but having these next-gen satellites with laser links will enable communications from one satellite to another on the same or adjacent orbital plane. A ground station does not have to be in the same satellite footprint as user terminals. It's not just going to reduce the number of ground stations needed for global coverage. Laser crosslinks can also lower latency because they reduce the number of hops between the satellites and those ground stations. This isn't the only shortage that's affecting SpaceX. Not only are they dealing with less liquid oxygen to go around, but there's also a chip shortage, and that is causing some major problems, especially for those waiting on Starlink user terminals. Elon Musk has confirmed the possibility that this could delay launches, but right now he says it's a risk, but not yet a limiting factor. There is a delay in wait times for Starlink, but you can still place your pre-order on Starlink's website. Some users are now getting the message 
that their order won't be fulfilled until 2023 or later. SpaceX CFO Brett Johnson revealed some manufacturing numbers. Right now, SpaceX is only making about 5,000 Starlink dishes per week, but in October it hopes to meet consumer demand. The company currently has over 600,000 pre-orders for the service that is still in beta, and they're only producing the 5,000 a week. They do have quite the backlog with the chip shortage and their current capabilities to produce those dishes. They do expect that number to multiply in the coming months. According to Johnson, SpaceX will have a newer user terminal coming this fall. It's rumored to be smaller and to be square-shaped. It's also going to be cheaper, but it will still cost SpaceX money to produce. It's unclear if you, as the consumer, will experience a price drop just yet. This should mean that they will be able to turn out multiples of their current 5,000 dishes a week. The dishes are actually quite expensive to produce. They originally cost $3,000 per user terminal. Now it's about $1,300, but they're going to keep trying to drive these costs down. You are still paying $499 for your dish as a consumer, and it's unknown if and when that price will drop. The new dish is rumored to be smaller. It's also rumored to be square-shaped, and that could obviously kill the nickname Dishy McFlatface. The video that this came from was from HyperChange, and do note and take a look at that video where they explain and produced the drawing of what they think is what the new dish will look like. That's it for the Starlink Report. For this September 13th, 2021, I'm Huey Poplock. Thanks for joining.